The most valuable commodity I know of is information. Wouldn't you agree? This audio is brought to you by Leaders Basement. It can be found in the public domain. Feel free to use and download. As a man thinketh. Thought and character. The aphorism, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, not only embraces the whole of a man's being, but is so comprehensive as to reach out to every condition and circumstance of his life. A man is literally what he thinks, his character being the complete sum of all his thoughts. As the plant springs from, and could not be without, the seed, so every aspect of a man springs from the hidden seeds of thought, and could not have appeared without them. This applies equally to those acts called spontaneous and unpremeditated as to those which are deliberately executed. Act is the blossom of thought, and joy and suffering are its fruits. Thus does a man garner in the sweet and bitter fruitage of his own husbandry. Thought in the mind hath made us. What we are by thought was wrought and built. If a man's mind hath evil thoughts, pain comes on him, as comes the wheel the ox behind. If one endure in purity of thought, joy follows him, as his own shadow, sure. Man is a growth by law, and not a creation by artifice. And cause and effect is as absolute and undeviating in the hidden realm of thought as in the world of visible and material things. A noble and godlike character is not a thing of favor or chance, but is the natural result of continued effort in right thinking, the effect of long cherished association with godlike thoughts. An ignoble and bestial character by the same process is the result of the continued harboring of groveling thoughts. Man is made or unmade by himself. In the armory of thoughts he forges the weapons by which he destroys himself. He also fashions the tools with which he builds for himself heavenly mansions of joy and strength and peace. By the right choice and true application of thought, man ascends to the divine perfection. By the abuse and wrong application of thought, he descends below the I'm level weak. of the beast. Between these two extremes are all the grades of character, and man is their maker and master. Of all the beautiful truths pertaining to the soul which have been restored and brought to light in this age, none is more gladdening or more fruitful of divine promise and confidence than this, that man is the master of thought, the molder of character, and the maker and shaper of condition, environment, and destiny. As a being of power, intelligence, and love, and the lord of his own thoughts, man holds the key to every situation and contains within himself that transforming and regenerative agency by which he may make himself what he wills. Man is always the master even in his weaker and most abandoned state. But in his weakness and degradation, he is the foolish master who misgoverns his household. When he begins to reflect upon his condition and to search diligently for the law upon which his being is established, he then becomes the wise master, directing his energies with intelligence and fashioning his thoughts to fruitful issues. Such is the conscious master. A man can only thus become by discovering within himself the laws of thought, which discovery is totally a matter of application, self-analysis, and experience. Only by much searching and mining are gold and diamonds obtained, and man can find every truth connected with his being, if he will dig deep into the mine of his soul, and that he is the maker of his character, the molder of his life, and the builder of his destiny, he may unerringly prove if he will watch, control, and alter his thoughts, tracing their effects upon himself, upon others, 
and upon his life and circumstances, linking cause and effect by patient practice and investigation, and utilizing his every experience, even to the most trivial everyday occurrence, as a means of obtaining that knowledge of himself which he... Thoughts become things when strongly acted upon with consistent progressive action every single day. As a means of obtaining that knowledge of himself which is understanding, wisdom, power. In this direction, as in no other, is the law absolute that he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. For only by patience, practice, and ceaseless importunity can a man enter the door of the temple of knowledge. Effect of thought on circumstances. Man's mind may be likened to a garden, which may be intelligently cultivated or allowed to run wild. But whether cultivated or neglected, it must and will bring forth. If no useful seeds are put into it, then an abundance of useless weed seeds will fall therein and will continue to produce their kind. Just as a gardener cultivates his plot, keeping it free from weeds and growing the flowers and fruits which he requires, so may a man tend the garden of his mind, weeding out all the wrong, useless, and impure thoughts and cultivating toward perfection the flowers and fruits of right, useful, and pure thoughts. By pursuing this process, a man sooner or later discovers that he is the master gardener of his soul, the director of his life. He also reveals within himself the laws of thought and understands with ever-increasing accuracy how the thought forces and mind elements operate in the shaping of his character, circumstances, and destiny. Thought and character are one. And as character can only manifest and discover itself through environment and circumstance, the outer conditions of a person's life will always be found Go to be you. harmoniously related to his inner state. This does not mean that a man's circumstances at any given time are an indication of his entire character, but that those circumstances are so intimately connected with some vital thought element within himself that, for the time being, they are indispensable to his development. Every man is where he is by the law of his being. The thoughts which he has built into his character have brought him here, and in the arrangement of his life there is no element of chance, but all is the result of a law which cannot err. This is just as true of those who feel out of harmony with their surroundings as of those who are contented with them. As a progressive and evolving being, man is where he is that he may learn that he may grow. And as he learns the spiritual lesson which any circumstance contains for him, it passes away and gives place to other circumstances. Man is buffeted by circumstances so long as he believes himself to be the creature of outside conditions. But when he realizes that he is a creative power and that he may command the hidden soil and seeds of his being out of which circumstances grow, he then becomes the rightful master of himself. That circumstances grow out of thought every man knows who has for any length of time practiced self-control and self-purification, for he will have noticed that the alteration in his circumstances has been in exact ratio with his altered mental condition. So true is this that when a man earnestly applies himself to remedy the defects in his character and makes swift and marked progress, he passes rapidly through a succession of vicissitudes. The soul attracts that which it secretly harbors, that which it loves, and also that which it fears. It reaches the height of its cherished aspirations. It falls to the level of its unchastened desires. And circumstances are the means by which the soul receives its own. Every thought seed sown or allowed to fall into the mind and to take root there produces its own 
blossoming sooner or later into act and bearing its own fruitage of opportunity and circumstance. Good thoughts bear good fruit. Bad thoughts, bad fruit. The outer world of circumstance shapes itself to the inner world of thought. And both pleasant and unpleasant external conditions are factors which make for the ultimate good of the individual. As the reaper of his own harvest, man learns both by suffering and bliss. Following the inmost desires, aspirations, thoughts by which he allows himself to be dominated, pursuing the will of the wisps of impure imaginings, or steadfastly walking the highway of strong and high endeavor, a man at last arrives at their fruition and fulfillment in the outer conditions of his life. The laws of growth and adjustment everywhere obtains. A man does not come to the almshouse or the jail by the tyranny of fate or circumstance, but by the pathway of groveling thoughts and base desires. Nor does a pure-minded man fall suddenly into crime by stress of any mere external force. The criminal thought had long been secretly fostered in the heart, and the hour of opportunity revealed its gathered power. Circumstance does not make the man. It reveals him to himself. No such conditions can exist as descending into vice and its attendant sufferings apart from vicious inclinations, or ascending into virtue and its pure happiness without the continued cultivation of virtuous aspirations. And man, therefore, as lord and master of thought, is the maker of himself, the shaper and author of environment. Even at birth the soul comes to its own, and through every step of its earthly pilgrimage it attracts those combinations of conditions which reveal itself, which are the reflections of its own purity and impurity, its strength and weakness. Men do not attract that which they want, but that which they are. Their win. Amen. Want, you don't get what you want in life. Are. You get Their what wins, you must have. Ambitions are thwarted at every step. But their inmost thoughts and desires are fed with their own food, be it foul or clean. The divinity that shapes our ends is in ourselves. It is our very self. Only himself manacles man. Thought and action are the jailers of fate. They imprison being base. They are also the angels of freedom. They liberate being noble. Not what he wishes and prays for does a man get, but what he justly earns. His wishes and prayers are only gratified and answer when they harmonize with his thoughts and actions. In the light of this truth, what then is the meaning of fighting against circumstances? It means that a man is continually revolting against an effect without, while all the time he is nourishing and preserving its cause in his heart. That cause may take the form of a conscious vice or an unconscious weakness, but whatever it is, it stubbornly retards the efforts of its possessor and thus calls aloud for remedy. Men are anxious to improve their circumstances, but are unwilling to improve themselves. They therefore remain bound. The man who does not shrink from self-crucifixion can never fail to accomplish the object upon which his heart is set. This is as true of earthly as of heavenly beings. Even the man whose sole object is to acquire wealth must be prepared to make great personal sacrifices before he can accomplish his object, and how much more so he who would realize a strong and well-poised life. Here is a man who is wretchedly poor. He is extremely anxious that his surroundings and home comforts should be improved, yet all the time he shirks his work and considers he is justified in trying to deceive his employer on the ground of the insufficiency of his wages. Such we a man does not understand the simplest rudiments out. of those principles which are the basis of true prosperity, and is not only totally unfitted to rise out of his wretchedness, but is actually attracting himself a still deeper wretchedness by dwelling in and acting out indolent, deceptive, and unmanly thoughts. 
Here is a rich man who is the victim of a painful and persistent disease as the result of gluttony. He is willing to give large sums of money to get rid of it, but he will not sacrifice his gluttonous desires. He wants to gratify his taste for rich and unnatural viands and have his health as well. Such a man is totally unfit to have health because he has not yet learned the first principles of a healthy life. Here is an employer of labor who adopts crooked measures to avoid paying the regulation wage and, in the hope of making larger profits, reduces the wages of his work people. Such a man is altogether unfitted for prosperity. And when he finds himself bankrupt... How's everybody doing on this and beautiful Saturday morning? circumstances. Not knowing that he is the sole author of his condition. You're the sole author, the director of your own movie. These three cases nearly as awesome, illustrative of the truth that man is the cause of, though nearly always is unconsciously, of his circumstances, and that whilst aiming at a good end, he is continually frustrating its accomplishment by encouraging thoughts and desires which cannot possibly harmonize with that end. Such cases could be multiplied and varied almost indefinitely, but this is not necessary, as the listener can, if he so resolves, trace the action of the laws of thought in his own mind and life, and until this is done, mere external facts cannot serve as a ground of reason. Circumstances, however, are so complicated, thought is so deeply rooted, and the conditions of happiness vary so vastly with individuals, that a man's entire soul condition, although it may be known to himself, cannot be judged by another from the external aspect thank you. of his life alone. Thank you. Luck is not real, but I always appreciate it and thank everybody who wishes it toward me. A man may be dishonest I actually just posted a status yesterday saying that only the weak believe in luck. Because that's the truth. You can't just hope and wish for things to be given to you your entire life. You must work your ass off toward them, persevere, have the strong habits, the rituals, habits, routines, dedication, and most importantly, the mindset to make the sacrifices and persevere every single day. The weak believe in luck. The strong and successful will do whatever the fuck it takes. The honest man reaps the good results of his honest thoughts and acts. He also brings upon himself the sufferings which his vices produce. The dishonest man likewise garners his own suffering and happiness. It is pleasing to human vanity to believe that one suffers because of one's virtue. Wow. But not until a man has extirpated every sickly, bitter, and impure thought from his mind and washed every Let sinful go. stain from his soul All can negativity. he be in a position to know and declare that his sufferings are the All result of his good and not All of his hate. bad qualities. All malice. And on the way to, All yet regret. long before he has reached All that guilt. supreme perfection, All he will fear. have found working in his mind and life it's time the to great let go, guys. law which is absolutely just and which cannot therefore give good for evil evil for good <laughs> possessed of such knowledge he will then know looking back upon his past ignorance and blindness that his life is and always was justly ordered and that all his past experiences good and bad were the equitable outworking of his evolving yet unevolved self Good thoughts and actions can never produce bad results. Bad thoughts and actions can never produce good results. This is but saying that nothing can come from corn but corn, nothing from nettles but nettles. Men understand this law in the natural world and work with it, but few understand it in the mental and moral world, though its operation there is just as simple and undeviating, and they therefore do not cooperate with it. Suffering is always the effect of wrong thought in some direction. It is an indication that the individual is out of harmony with himself, with the law of his being. The sole and supreme use of wow. suffering is to purify, to burn out all that is useless and I don't think people impure. realize how suffering difficult it is to flex is every single muscle in there your body. There could be no object in burning They got you on stage for like a half hour sometimes. Removed. 
and a perfect I'm not doing bodybuilding but this is what I'm suffer. really passionate about the circumstances which a man encounters with suffering are the so result no of his own mental inharmony the circumstances which a man encounters with blessedness are the result of his own mental blessings, harmony blessings, blessings. blessedness not material possessions is the measure of right thought wretchedness not lack of material possessions is the measure of wrong thought a man may be cursed and rich he may be blessed and poor blessedness and riches are only joined together when the riches are rightly and wisely used and the poor man only descends into wretchedness when he regards his lot as a burden unjustly imposed indigence and indulgence are the two extremes of wretchedness they are both equally unnatural and the result of mental disorder a man is not rightly conditioned until he is a happy healthy and prosperous being and happiness health and prosperity are the result of a harmonious adjustment of the inner with the outer of the man with his surroundings a man not only begins to be a man when he ceases to whine and revile and commences to search no for the hidden justice which regulates his life and as he adapts his mind to that regulating factor he ceases to accuse others as the cause of his condition and builds himself up in strong rules. and noble thoughts ceases to kick against circumstances but begins to use them as aids to his more rapid progress and as a means of discovering the hidden powers and possibilities within himself law not confusion is the dominating principle in the universe i don't know justice, why people complain so not much injustice about is the soul and or substance of life clean in your dishes and righteousness not corruption you know it's is like molding one and a trillion force in the spiritual government of the world. human being this being so man has but to right himself to find the lottery, that the universe like is right and during the process of putting of himself right life, then even he will find that human. as he alters his thoughts toward so things and other people head down, things and other moping, people will alter towards making yourself him. feel like a victim the proof of this truth and is in every person and it therefore admits done. of easy investigation by systematic introspection and self-analysis let a man radically alter his thoughts and he will be astonished at the rapid transformation it will effect in the material conditions of his life Men imagine that thought can be kept secret but it cannot it rapidly crystallizes into habit and habit solidifies into circumstance bestial thoughts crystallize into habits of drunkenness and sensuality which solidify into circumstances of destitution and disease impure thoughts of every kind crystallize into enervating and confusing habits thank you which sir solidify into distracting I practice and often circumstances thoughts of fear doubt and indecision crystallize into weak unmanly and irresolute habits which solidify into circumstances of failure indigence and slavish dependence lazy thoughts crystallize into habits of uncleanliness and dishonesty which solidify into circumstances of foulness and beggary hateful and condemnatory Hope thoughts crystallize into habits of Faith. accusation and violence which solidify into circumstances of injury and persecution now that selfish thoughts of all doors. kinds crystallize into habits of self-seeking which solidify into circumstances Constantly more or less distressing on the other hand nowhere, beautiful thoughts of all kinds crystallize into habits of, of grace life, and kindliness in your mind which solidify into genial and, and sunny circumstances really pure thoughts crystallize into habits of temperance and self-control which solidify into circumstances of repose work. and peace thoughts of courage self-reliance and decision crystallize into manly habits which solidify into circumstances of success plenty and freedom Everybody told me it was impossible. energetic thoughts crystallize into habits of cleanliness of, and industry which solidify into circumstances of pleasantness gentle and forgiving thoughts crystallize into habits of gentleness which solidify into protective and now preservative circumstances loving and unselfish thoughts crystallize into habits of self-forgetfulness for others which solidify into circumstances of sure and abiding prosperity 
and true riches. Hung around the wrong crowd when I was younger. Persisted in, be it good or bad. Was in jail. Cannot fail to produce its results on the character and did drugs. A man cannot. You can't take things back. You can't press a rewind button for life. Indirectly, yet surely. You can only learn from your mistakes. Nature helps every man to the gratification of the thoughts. Not repeat them. Which he most encourages. And opportunities are presented which will most speedily bring to the surface. Both the you good and evil thoughts. You can keep making the same mistakes over and over again and Let have a man the same cease experiences from sinful perpetuate thoughts. Perpetuate themselves and all the world will soften towards him life. and be ready to help him. Let him put away his weakly and sickly thoughts and lo, opportunities will spring up on every hand to aid his strong resolves. Let him encourage good thoughts and no hard fate shall bind him down to wretchedness and shame. The world is your kaleidoscope and the varying combinations of colors which at every succeeding moment it presents to you are the exquisitely adjusted pictures of your ever-moving thoughts. So you will be what you will to be. Let failure find its false content in that want, poor word environment. But spirit scorns it and is free. It masters time. It conquers space. Thank you, brother. It cows that boastful trickster chance and bids the tyrant circumstance uncrown and fill a servant's place. The human will, that force unseen, the offspring of a deathless soul, can hew away to any goal. The walls of granite in the beam. Be not impatient in delays, but wait as one who understands. When spirit rises and commands, the gods are ready to obey. Effect of thought on health and the body. The body is the servant of the mind. It obeys the operations the of the mind, Arnold whether they be deliberately chosen or automatically that. expressed. At the bidding of unlawful I mean, thoughts, the body sinks rapidly into disease and decay. At the command of Traps. glad oh, and beautiful thoughts, it becomes most muscular. With Crab most muscular. And beauty. Here you go. Disease and health. Yeah, they do all have are rooted in thought. Names. It's not sickly thoughts will express themselves Arnold's through pose. a sickly body. Here we go. Thoughts of fear have been known to kill a man as speedily as a bullet, and they are continually killing thousands of people just as surely, though less rapidly. The people who live in fear of disease are the people who like not the best there. Anxiety quickly demoralizes the whole body and lays it open to the entrance of disease, while impure thoughts, even if not physically indulged, will soon shatter the nervous system. Strong, pure, and happy thoughts build up the body in vigor and grace. The body is a delicate and plastic instrument which responds readily to the thoughts by which it is impressed and habits of thought will produce their own effects, good or bad, upon it. Men will continue to have impure and poisoned blood so long as they propagate unclean thoughts. Out of a clean heart comes a clean life and a clean body. Out of a defiled yeah. mind proceeds a defiled life and a corrupt body. Thought is the fount of action, life and manifestation. Wings. Make the fountain pure. At all give you wings. will be pure. Pull ups and let Change of diet will not help a man who will not change his thoughts. When a man makes his thoughts pure, he no longer desires impure food. <sighs> Clean thoughts make He's got to live the right way. The so saint it's easier said than done. He is not a saint. But he if you make the right decisions his thoughts, over and over and over again and do the things that you said you were going to do you body, long after mind. the mood that you, you said them in, you your body. you'll you wake up body, one day your mind. and you'll be amazed Thoughts of, malice and of what's going on in your life. Despondency rob the body of its health and grace. A sour face does not come by chance. It is made by sour thoughts. Wrinkles that mar are drawn by folly, passion, and pride. I know a woman of 96 who has the bright, innocent face of a girl. I know a man well under middle age whose face is drawn into inharmonious contours. The one is the result of a sweet and sunny disposition, the other 
is the outcome of passion and discontent. As you cannot have a sweet and wholesome abode unless you admit the air and sunshine freely into your rooms. Thank you. So a strong body and a bright, happy, or serene I'm my countenance all. can only result I mean, it's from really the honestly not into the mind of about of the trophies or titles will or serenity. money. I can make my own money. On the and I got a lot of trophies, but <laughs> the person you become thought, in the process, during the journey, who cannot distinguish and the impact you have on others, those, who have lived righteously, those are the ages, two most important calm, things. Peaceful and softly mellow, it's true. Like the setting sun. Not just saying it. I have recently seen a philosopher on his deathbed. He was not old, except in years. He died as sweetly and peacefully as he had lived. There is no physician like cheerful thought for dissipating the ills of the body. There is no comforter to compare with good will for dispersing the shadows of grief and sorrow. To live continually in thoughts of ill will, cynicism, suspicion, and envy is to be confined in a self-made prison hole. But to think well of all, to be cheerful with all, When's comp? One week. I posted that in the title. In exactly Such one week out. Next Saturday morning, Boston, well Massachusetts. Of peace every creature will bring What's up, Kyle? Peace to their possessor. Thought and purpose. Until thought is linked with purpose, there is no intelligent accomplishment. With the majority, the bark of thought is allowed to drift upon the ocean of life aimlessness is a vice and such drifting must not continue for him who would steer clear of catastrophe and destruction they who have no central purpose in their life fall an easy prey to petty worries fears troubles and self-pityings all of which are indications of weakness which lead just as surely as deliberately planned sins though by a different route to failure unhappiness and loss for weakness cannot persist in a power evolving universe a man should conceive of a legitimate purpose in his heart and set out to accomplish it he should make this purpose the centralizing point of his thoughts it may take the form of a spiritual ideal or it may be a worldly eat. I object, actually do need to go according eat. to his nature at the time being I like to he should steadily focus take a little bit in the morning now before I get in my first meal. Which he has set before him. Do a protein. He should make this purpose his supreme duty and should devote himself to its attainment, not allowing his thoughts to wander away into ephemeral Usually fancies, longings, and imaginings. Rolled oats or this muesli. is the royal road to self-control and true concentration of thought. Honey in there for Even if he fails again and again Maybe to accomplish his berries. purpose, as he necessarily must until weakness is overcome, the strength of character gained will be the measure of his true success, and this will form a new starting point for future power and triumph. Those who are not prepared for the apprehension of a great purpose should fix yeah. the thoughts upon the faultless Thank you, sir. of their beauty, no matter how I guess I'll get going now. may appear. Only in this way can the thoughts be gathered and focused and resolution and energy be developed, which being done, there is nothing which may not be accomplished. The weakest Who's laughing at my video of me? And believing this truth, that strength can only be developed by Haters. effort and practice, will, thus believing, at once begin to exert itself, and adding effort to effort, patience to patience, and strength to strength, will never cease to develop, and will at last grow divinely strong. As the physically weak man can make himself strong by careful and patient training, so the man of weak thoughts can make them strong by exercising himself in right, right thinking. Well, everybody have a fantastic rest of your and and Saturday morning. With purpose, take care. Enter the ranks of those strong ones Eat healthy. Stay hydrated. As one of the pathways to and train hard. Make all conditions God bless. Serve them.